When I'm in a meltdown, I'm in a meltdown. There's nothing you can say to me about God, Jesus, Buddha. There's nothing that you can say to me about my mindset, law of attraction, manifestation. That's going to change the way that my nervous system feels. Hey, special family. Welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Autism Mom, and on this channel, we talk about autism and everything in between. Let's do this fair use reaction video and tell me what you think. One aspect of autism that we don't talk about is that autism is not an intellectual disorder. You know, it's not something that has to do with intelligence, but I want to just talk about something new. It's also not a mindset shift. You know, when I'm in a meltdown, I'm in a meltdown. There's nothing you can say to me about God, Jesus, Buddha. There's nothing that you can say to me about my mindset, law of attraction, manifestation. That's going to change the way that my nervous system feels. And, you know, a lot of people seem to be able to, you know, kind of weaponize um, when we are in pain and immediately want to make it about the way that we're looking at life when a lot of us want to live a normal life. A lot of us want to be able to just change our mindset to change the conditions that we're in because we wouldn't be in some of the situations that we're in provided that we had control over our nervous system and the way that things affect us. As much as I appreciate the aspects of autism that make me great, um, this part of autism doesn't. So suggesting someone to change their mindset when they're going through nervous system um, issues is trash, in my humble opinion. Okay, so you've seen the video. This is the reason why I posted yesterday's video first, so you can see how a, mind, a, a meltdown can get out of hand. And today's video, I wanted to share someone who is autistic shared what a meltdown feels like and what goes through their mind. So like the people in the comments were saying yesterday, oh, it's the parents' fault. The parents should have trained them kids better. Um, kids, it's the home training. When the meltdowns happen, there is nothing you as a parent, aunt, cousin, whoever can say to a person or a child in a meltdown that will change it or change your mindset. It's already there. It's full blown happening. Rerouting, you can try rerouting the person. You can try taking their mind off of stuff by doing other stuff to have them focus on something else. But in real life, there's nothing you can do about it. But oh, this video garners this man a lot of different Okay, let's say his comment section was lit. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go to the comment section and see. Girl, they were on. First commenter says, Whenever someone is in the middle of a meltdown, look at them right in the eyes. Take a deep breath and ask, Is this all really necessary? It'll help the person understand they're being extra and should help them compose themselves. Literally, nothing will go wrong. Ma'am, what planet are you living on? I tried that with my son between the part where he tr was trying to choke me and me pushing him off me not to choke me. You think looking him in the eye was doing anything? Telling him stop, stop, show me your safe hands. Nothing was working ma'am. He who lives it knows it. This person lives it. Oh but he had to respond. He said I seriously hope you have absolutely no contact with any person that is autistic because this is insane mindset will do them endless harm. An autistic meltdown isn't being extra. That's almost like saying someone having a seizure is being extra. It's someone experiencing intense sensory overload that they cannot process. When I constantly hear sounds I cannot block out at work, it gets to the point that I feel like my skin is on fire and my mind is shrieking and if I don't get out of the situation, I melt down. People like you are why people like me fear ever disclosing autism. We are disregarded. I'm a very intelligent person who has excel excelled at many things in, the li in life 
and live through challenges you cannot even imagine. And yet, when I try to explain autism to people, I'm told I'm foolish or lazy or lying about my experience. This is from someone with autism. Who can we, especially parents or family members, learn from the most? Someone with autism. He said it. I learned it. You heard it. Next commenter says, As a special education teacher and a minister, I completely empathize with what you are saying. I will give you the time and space to reboot and pray for you at the same time. There are times when we can't pray for ourselves. We need intercessors. I pray for my child. I pray over my child. I pray God's anointing on my child. But when he's in a meltdown, none of that helps. It is me versus him. It is defend me from him. And that's what most of us, especially parents, are saying. But he commented back and he said, Why? If your God exists, he created this person to do exactly this. It was his intention. What would praying do when it's what your God wanted? Oh girl, that's one part I'm not going to go. He said it. I heard it. You heard it too. But I'm not going to go into detail, details about that because I believe in God. So, um, yeah. Next commenter says, As an autistic person, I hope you're not saying it's not a learning disability. It is. Okay. So someone else comes in and says, They don't think autism isn't a learning disability. So he responded, Autism is not an intellectual disorder. That's an actual fact. What do you think? Is autism an intellectual disorder or not? Let me know in the comment section below. Next commenter says, what about harm cause? How does one with autism process that? Despite intentions, the other person was harmed. Boom. She got a point. He responded. Can you rephrase this question? I'm not, I'm not understanding. So she um, rephrased. She's clearly, somebody else rephrased. She's clearly talking about when your meltdown causes harm or discomfort or distress or physical property damage to someone else. He didn't respond, but that is my issue right there. Because once this meltdown happened, I'm the one who's protecting me. And my son doesn't mean it. He's not doing it on purpose, but the harm is done. I always, I've always wondered, what is the after effect? How do they feel about that? I was hoping he answered that question. Next commenter says, Hi, serious question from an ignorant person. Me. What can I do or what would be the best reaction of a person when seeing someone else experiencing a mel meltdown? Thank you. Someone else responded, Depends. Changes with everyone. My meltdowns are normally frustration based because I can't process things fast enough. And most of the time I'm dealing with a lot of bottled up emotions at the same time. So my meltdowns when I'm on my own, I have a tendency to use pain to bring myself out of it and give my body a mind and mind something else to focus on. So normally I hit things. But with other people, the best way I've had people help is to try to take my focus away from whatever the frustration is from. There's not really any way to just bring someone out of it though. It's just patience and understanding. Hmm, girl, preach for the most part. As she said in the video, as he said in the video, there's nothing you can really do to change things because we don't get to control how our body processes things. Remember, it's spectrum for a reason. Triggers are different and reactions are different. Mm. She said it. That's from someone with autism. And that's why we have this channel. So we can learn from people with autism what it's like. Next commenter says, I couldn't describe meltdowns. You just nailed it. The worst part is the negative self-talk at the end of the meltdown. I'm an adult, right? Thank you for putting my feelings into words. Thank you. Someone else commented, this really resonates. I practice meditation and it has changed my life. It is a deeply profound experience for me. Nervous, while that is true, it is also true that when my nervous system is crispy fried, I can't breathe my way back to peace or dissolve the sense of I and be totally fine. Those moments are like riding tsunami waves. I do what I can with what I've got in the moment. 
Those on the outside are always quick to throw my practices at me without understanding or compassion for what I am experiencing. It's interesting being multidimensional, having really incredible qualities that allow me to do amazing things and qualities that painfully hinder me. Even more interesting trying to explain it to those who don't understand. Next commenter. If I'm already having a meltdown, nothing can be done. But if I feel one coming, sometimes I can regulate myself with certain somatic techniques. So I think there's something there. Maybe not for everyone, but for me. Next commenter. I agree. I think people say all that BS because they feel uncomfortable when you melt down. So then they try to manage their discomfort by attempting to fix you with unsolicited advice. And it's actually a piece of Buddhist wisdom when you say you can't change my nervous system. Those people need to go, let go of trying to fix you and deal with their own discomfort by like taking their own advice for a change. Next commenter, I used to feel that way. It's truly a mind and body thing. Strengthen your body and your mind follows first step is, is to step outside of the victim. I can't do anything about it mentally. You're most definitely in control of yourself. You just need to develop it. Somebody else responded, tell me you didn't understand autism without telling me you didn't understand autism. I truly do wish all the health gurus with all the answers would just STF you. Mmm, spicy. If you would like to follow the person that I got this video from, this is his Instagram page and handle. Go ahead and give him a follow. And let me know in the comment section below what you think about this video and how do you deal with your child when they're in a full-blown meltdown. Catch you in the next one. Bye.